the coagulase test determines whether a bacterium produces an enzyme called coagulase. Now, coagulase is uh, produced by some pathogenic bacteria and can be used to coagulate blood or cause blood to clump. So our reagent today is going to be rabbit plasma, right? So it's just the uh, plasma of uh, um, rabbit blood. And then we're going to determine whether uh, the bacterium, that our test bacteria, are going to get to coagulate. And we'll see this as this clumping, right? Um, once again, we're going to use this as a presumptive test, right? Because the test itself will tell us so much more. Uh, because pathogenic staphylococci, or at least presumed pathogenic staphylococcus aureus, will uh, it produces coagulase, whereas non-pathogenic uh, staphylococcus generally doesn't produce um, coagulase, right? So we're going to look for that, and then, uh, again, that'll tell us so much more. Because it's a presumptive test, however, don't forget, work has already been done, right? I know through microscope analysis that this is a um, gram-positive coccus. I know using my catalase, I've confirmed that this is some sort of gram-positive staphylococcus. Right? And so now really I want to determine is, is this potentially pathogenic Staphylococcus aureus or is this some other Staphylococcus? The test itself is relatively simple, very quick. So we simply take our rabbit plasma and then one drop or like a, you know, decent sized drop into each test circle, right? Nicely clean slide, of course, as always. And then all I'm going to do is simply take my cells and drop it in, okay? Notice, by the way, it's kind of cloudy, all right? That's how our plasma is going to look. And then I'm going to add my test bacteria to A and then to B. And then using uh, the results, you can determine which one of these is Staphylococcus aureus, which one is not, all right? So simply add it, give it a little mix. Try to make sure that the bacteria comes out. Give it a mix, and then I'm going to let that sit for a bit. Reaction proceeds usually pretty quickly. And I'm going to zoom in on that in a second after I add bacterium B. But sometimes can take upwards of about 30 seconds to even a minute, depending on uh, how healthy the bacterium is, how much bacteria you put down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oops. I'm going to put test bacterium B into our rabbit plasma drop and we give that a mix. Sometimes it helps to hold the slide, make sure it's well mixed, and then let's sterilize our loop. Give that a little moment and then it helps to just a ah, little bit of back and forth and you can already start to see the reaction, right? So I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to the camera. All right, one is obviously coagulating. The other one is remaining still kind of cloudy. Now, sometimes it's a little bit confusing in that the bacterial clumps that you chuck in there, right? So pieces of the colony, you know, they're kind of floating around. They look like clumps, right? But you see how the, um, the liquid on the left is starting to clear up, right? So all the... Uh, proteins and things like that in the plasma are starting to clear and you're left with these clumps. Whereas uh, for B, even though you see those clumps, which are probably just, um, you know, chunks of the colony floating around, the liquid still remains cloudy, right? So that indicates that's not a true coagulation. That's just stuff floating in the plasma, right? So that this, this then means that at least using our presumptive test, uh, bacterium A is coagulase positive. Bacterium B is coagulase negative, so then we have presumptively identified bacterium A to be Staphylococcus aureus, bacterium B to be some other Staphylococcus, because we know both of these are gram-positive cocci, both of them are catalase positive.